Welcome, crew, to What Are Your Three, a Channel 3 podcast where we take a member of the Channel 3 community, discuss three games of their choosing, some honorable mentions, some other odds and ends, and realize this is the first time I didn't do something weird with the introduction in weeks. So, hey, welcome. I'm Dan Tucker. With me as always, Ray. What's going on, everybody? Today's guest, the only way I can describe today's guest is I, it's early, you know, and I didn't look up where it happened. There's a special reaction GIF, and I'm going to say GIF here a couple times so that we know where we're doing GIFs, that I have used both to show excitement in yelling, but also to show disappointment and anger. I think it's just a versatile GIF to use, and it is features our guest tonight, Dorsal Finn himself and his wife. So Dorsal, welcome to the show. How are you doing? Pretty good. Uh, was it was it an excitement um, gift or was it just like a was it just yelling like what what was it because i have used it both ways that it was we were doing mad libs and i can't remember what was what the mad lib was but we both went screaming and i clipped it made it a gif and gif oh no oh i'm gonna stand united i'm gonna tell the divider right now <laughs> Hard G, it's Ray, Ray tried to but, throw a power move in there knowing I was going to stay muted let him get through his introduction but just the, the elbow drop on the way back around there we go it hurts <laughs> alright well yeah, let, but it, it could definitely be used by anything I guess anger or excitement I love it <laughs> versatile speaking of versatility let's move into that first game then because it too is versatile as we're here to talk about Minecraft we just tell everybody hey three games whatever you want to do no theme, whatever. If you want a theme, go for it. How did Minecraft end up the first one that we're going to talk about? Well, Minecraft's been, well, was my first game I ever got on my PC in freshman year. And it, I just hooked over the years. It's a, it's a game that I can go back to even today and play for hours and just binge it. And then I'll leave and play something else. But it's one of those games that will constantly stick with me. And I'm glad that it's still being I'm glad Microsoft actually kicked in and did something instead of it took them a while. I think the first year they had it, it wasn't showing any promise, but it's been growing constantly. So every once in a while, maybe like twice a year, I'll go back and just binge it. And it's always a good time. There's so many mods and just one of those really good games that can't be ruined. It's- and you have a lot of creativity. <laughs> So do you head back to the same saves? Do you have multiple saves? What's your when you go back in, you go for the binge, is it starting from scratch? What do you do? Usually I start from scratch. Most of the time now I just play with mods. And when I do play, I just find like a really big mod pack that I'm glad now versus when I first had my first PC, it can handle it all. <laughs> so it's I usually just start a new save every time and just create a new world. And now that there's so much mods, there's hours of i i even whip out like um there's this mod you create like sorting and to create each uh object i like whip out a paper and do all the math of what i need each each component how much i need of each one and it, it's i think that i think the sorting thing is the part i really like too is organizing things and building whatever i want which is really cool so what are what other mods do you play with normally? Every time I see a mod, there's usually Thomas the Tank Engine where he doesn't belong in Grand Theft Auto or <laughs> taking the place of Alduin in Skyrim or something like that. But uh, <laughs> but what what kind of mods are you running besides the sorting there? A lot of technology mods where you create all these machines that just make vanilla look like it's a whole nother game, I guess. But and more like realistic kind of thing because I'm I. The theme of like my favorite games is like I'm really huge in simulator games and how things that I couldn't do in real life, you know, I can do it in the game and I can do it without dying or <laughs> it's just that's that's my genre. <laughs> and Minecraft really fits in that genre of you can literally do whatever you want. So how did that work for you? Because I, I have to ask every time because I it, it took my son finally walking me through and helping me understand it. I, I tried in a in peak dad fashion at one point to be like, I'm going to turn <laughs> this game. I'm going to figure it out. There's no manual for it. There's no nothing. It just drops me in the woods and just like I and there's there's not I, I had nothing. I, I shut the game down and finally in like second grade, he came back. He's like, here's what we got to do. How, so how did that work for you? Did you come in seeking this out freshman year? You got your, you got your, it's your PC, but like, how did that work for you? 
I, I think I, I, I originally had, I was a PlayStation kid growing up, and I eventually, like, I saved enough money to buy my PC. I had Minecraft on my, uh, I think, PS4 or PS3, I can't remember. But I once I got my PC, I'm like, oh, it's a cheap game. I don't have much money. So I was like, that was perfect. And then from there, it just kept going. And I just grinded it, and I played. I eventually was able to play with some friends. I, once I upgraded my PC, I could make my own server and have my friends play with me. So when you dive back in, is it creative? Is it going for survival? What do you, do you mix it up or do you just kind of go in and, and just fight, fight or die? I, I, I never really played creative that often ever. Cause I, I like to build, I like to feel the accomplishment of like, I built that, like I got all the materials and I built that. And like I built this dam one time, and it just it, the accomplishment of looking at it, even though like no one else is gonna see this but me, it's just the satisfaction of like I built that, I built that house out of I got all the materials for it, and I built it. So like going in creative, like usually in most games, like if you like cheat in a game or something, it just like ruins it for me. Like I I have to grind for it, more satisfaction. Fair enough. Well, yeah, you should be you should be happy to know Microsoft has not let you down. It was, I think, the, the <laughs> number three. I, I've been referring to Bray as, as producer Ray, but he's dropping it in here. For, we usually drop notes for each other, kind of, kind of live. But he's dropped for me the number three most played game of 2023. So this thing's still plugging along. It's crazy. <laughs> it's so what do you crazy. What do you think gives it longevity? Is it just that it's that wide open? It's just the the unlimited amount of what you want to do. It there's nothing you can't do in a sense. Like, so you could create a whole new world and it's just starting from scratch and you could do whatever you want. And it's just, you let your brain, I think it just lets my little kid brain that I used to play with my Legos and just explore and build really neat. Yeah. My, my son is upstairs literally as he was going to bed, he was pulling out something bit the Minecraft. It's the same thing for him. Something bit the Minecraft bug form again he's up there he's cracking open some books he bought at barnes and noble one day of just like how to how to engineer with redstone and and various contraptions oh, yeah. and traps I, I think he, he wants to take a serious run at the uh the ender and the ender dragon which is my final question have you have you in fact is that is that the best way of describing having beaten the game if you take out the ender dragon or is it time in the nether how do you do you consider that you've beaten this game or is this just more of a vibe for you i guess uh, i i have killed ender dragon multiple times but I, 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 it doesn't feel like the end even though that's like the final boss in like vanilla it doesn't because like you can you could still keep playing and it just it feels like an endless thing usually i like after like a few weeks of grinding it then i'll just oh i'll go play another game and that'll be it for that world but it's it's usually whenever you want to stop and that's the end for me i guess that it's, could be that could be dangerous no real in some end. cases Oh yeah, if I if I didn't get stopped by everyone else in my life, hey, come do this, <laughs> I probably would play it for a very long time. <laughs> All right. Well, speaking of games that are simulations that run for a long time, we'll get. I guess we'll get to the end of this one later. But we're going over to Cities Skylines and going into the the simulator realm. And uh, I'm just going to ask. So I, I I get how this fits in with the theme. You're talking about kind of this open world, create what you want uh, piece of this here. So tell me about Cities. It's the the in-depth building mechanics in city skylines uh, it, it's also it's got that minecraft thing where it, you you can you have your creativity and you can build it however you want you can build the city you lived in one to one best of your ability and like it, it it's a game i could play for hours on end and it, i'm really excited for number 2 but <laughs> cities uh one has taken me for hours on end and i don't got much words for it but so so do you kind of run with one city here or is this is this something where you come and it's kind of like minecraft you come back in you start from scratch or is this one running civil engineering project you've been running i i usually i usually restart if i like stop playing for a while i'll 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 make a new world because like it it's like the uh the thing with that, if you leave for months and you come back, you almost kind of like forget what you're doing. So like you, I was, I'll just make a whole new world. Why are you and protesting peasants? Leave me alone. I will do, I'm just going to start a new city. <laughs> I'm going to leave you here. 
but I, I just like to the aspect of being able to and like the with with mods you can go super in depth with painting the lines and creating where you want the traps to actually go in the road. It, it, it's so in depth. <laughs> it's really hard to explain, but it's that's what it just it's so much fun for me. So so there's some trial and error with this normally, right? Where you're trying to figure out how to balance the areas of commerce, traffic flow. You're trying to figure out how oh, you're yeah. just going to work. You're trying to work out every as. I mean, this game's in depth. That's what I'm kind of curious. We'll we we we'll get back to this later. I'm kind of curious what they're doing for a second one. But hold your thoughts on that. Don't don't go there. We got it. We got a separate segment for that. But I mean, this mm-hmm. this game's in depth, right down to like okay, you're planning the angles of you know where thoroughfares and circles and intersections and like how are things going to flow through the city. Are there times where like you've created this, you know, you started to create this monstrosity and you just find out like a section of your city just does not work. And you're like, well, I guess I got to just blow the whole thing up or do you just start from scratch? Like, how do you, how do you deal with that? Cause I get frustrating with some these things sometimes. <laughs> well, I, I had the city I played with earlier that, uh, I had my tourists like in the center where I wanted all my tourists to come. But then I also had all my high density housing and it just destroyed my traffic and all the intersections. And I'm like, ugh. And so, like, you can go in with uh, metros and uh, buses and try to get people to take those instead of driving on the roads. And it, it's just a lot of troubleshooting. And that's what makes it uh, so much fun. Dorsal's <laughs> just holding people at gunpoint, telling them, get on the bus, let's go. <laughs> get on the bus. You don't get your own car anymore. <laughs> You're just getting on the bus and, and moving through this way. This is just what it's going to be now. So are there are there mods for this one too? I mean, I just think back like oh. I, this. This harkens back to my Sim City days, where so you know you got kaiju coming in and wrecking the wrecking your city just because you're like, all right, it's time to it's time to end this experiment. You drop a volcano in the middle of your city or a kaiju <laughs> UFO attack, something like that. How about mod? What's the mod situation like here? There's endless amounts of mods, and it's you got to be careful because some mods will just break the game. <laughs> It's a, I think it's a ten, almost ten year old game. I can't remember eight, ten years old. Yeah, yep, get so towards like, the decade mark. Yeah, you can really bottleneck that game with mods, but yeah, there's there's a big abundance of them that you can go with, especially with roads. There, there's so many people that make different roads for around the world. So if you really want to go in depth on like if you were, grew up in Berlin or something and you want to make their roads, I'm sure you can find them. <laughs> everywhere hey it's dan here with a fresh ad break to let you know that one of our own they go by destroy the grave on channel 3.gg but they are known professionally when they record as caster garden caster garden dropping a new recording controllers and cartridges coming to spotify september 30th you go to c3.gg slash caster garden it will take you directly to their Spotify page. Not only will you hear their wide range of music, some smooth, some relaxing, some with a little extra intensity, but you'll hear guest spots from users like you Exorcist and the founder himself, Joel Willis. Go ahead, make sure you head to c3.gg slash caster garden and listen to the new recording controllers and cartridges. Six, six fresh tracks ready to go. And again, guest spots from fellow Channel 3 users. Check it out. The C3.gg slash Caster Garden. All right, so we move on to game three. After after two rounds of resource building and managing, we're going to move on to League of Legends. So let's start with how long have you been playing League of Legends? Since like 2018? So that, 17 or 18? Yeah, 2017 or 18. That almost feels recent. With the game. So when you play this game, could you play two games here where you can kind of, you know, you can sit back, you can build, you're kind of managing. With this one, can you play it kind of casually or is this the one you turn on because you're going to grind and you're going to compete? I mean, it, it really depends. I mean, you can play like ARAMs, which you're just, it's like a quick 5v5 and you could play those really casually. But what... League has really hooked me on, even though I have a love hate relationship with this game. It, the, the satisfaction of being good, <laughs> is what really gets me. And I think it all came from when I first started playing CS:GO, and the competitiveness in that game. I put too much hours in that game. I think I have like twenty eight 
hundred hours or something. And then my buddy, I, I had a friend when I was in college, and my or my roommate, he was like, you want to play League with me? And that's all he played. And I was like, ah, sure, I'll play. And that just hooked me, because doing good in that game is such a good feeling. <laughs> but then when you suck, it really ruins your day. <laughs> but it, it keeps me coming back somehow, even though I could get really mad at it. But it, it's okay. <laughs> so uh, there's 164 champions, which yeah, I'm I'm used to what I feel like are big rosters when I play something like Smash Brothers that has you know 80 <laughs> plus characters, or even Brawlhalla that has I think around the same thing, and then this doubles that. Uh, how, how do you go about figuring out the the play style you're going to use, like the characters you're going to use? Have, have you tried out all 164 champions? Like, how, what's that process? Lots and lots and lots of playing. <laughs> <laughs> like, because you can't just know all of this right when you start from the get-go. So you got to just keep playing and you play against these other champions. And there's champions I've yet to even play, but I played against probably every single champion. And you slowly learn, oh, that champion does that ability and I should watch out for that. So like you, you're constantly learning. I mean, it takes, I'm not the greatest. I'm still like in silver. But <laughs> it, it's a lot of learning. It's too much learning. So what what's your go to play style? What, what, what champion do you you know you got to bet the house? What champion are you gonna go with? I've ranked up the most with Trindamir and get a lot of backlash because he's just like a point click champion. But uh, I've also played Zaya, which is a, she's an ADC, so she plays in the bot lane. And she's really fun because she, she like launches these feathers out and you can get some really sweet plays if you, because her other ability, she pulls those feathers back and they, if they go through someone, they does damage and you can stun them or kill them. And it's, it's really satisfying. <laughs> so, yeah, so you're like, you're the, you're the, uh, the one that sneaks around and try to comes out of the bushes and attack with the assassins or the, kind of the fighter characters. Yeah. Fighter or. Yeah, I, I'm not a huge on playing tanks. For uh, some reason, I just never can get it. I <laughs> can't play a tank. I struggle. Mages are what's fun in League, because like, you have these crazy abilities that if you do good, you'll do really good. You'll get a lot of kills, but you can also really suck. <laughs> so League, obviously, it's not a game that we've had a lot of experience on here on Channel 3. If you know, if you want, if you're trying to introduce somebody who hasn't played League, what's how do you bring them into the game? How do you bring somebody new into the game? Mm, lie to them and tell them it's a great game. <laughs> uh, it's it'd be it's I I know I'll never get my wife to ever play because we I finally got her a PC, but because she's watched me play over the years and she knows for sure she never wants to touch it. But to get someone new into it. I you just gotta watch videos of people playing. I that's all the best advice, or or practice by yourself. But that can get really boring. <laughs> but I I've watched YouTubers on countless on like over and over. I just for somehow even though it's just a game that it, the same things happening every game, it can get really entertaining watching people build different things or play off meta builds, which is fun and usually they're a lot better than me so <laughs> but yeah you, you gotta watch people and you gotta slowly learn the game it's huge learning curve all right well we are leaving our original three here we're going to move into honorable mentions and we're going to start off with i think i made a, a reference or a crack at it earlier we're going to start off with the elder scrolls 5 also known as skyrim so well, out of this one, uh, same question. How we how are we leading off the honorable mentions? A little bit of an open world, not quite the simulator. Is that kind of the theme we're going with here? You kind of have an openness to do what you want, or what, what, what's what's putting that, this one at the top of the list? That one, it, Skyrim, had such a huge impact as a kid on my PlayStation, and me and my buddies, we all played it, even though it's just a single player game, and so many memories. I had this one, we, I had like three of my buddies over and one of our friends never played it. And we just told him everything about it. This city, this city, this city. And it's just the memories and the the mechanics of it was so cool at the time. Is probably the first big game I ever played besides like racing games and Madden. And 
I would beg my mom, please let me play on the TV. <laughs> you don't need to watch your show tonight. I want to play Skyrim. But it, it's, it, it was such a good game. And I'm, I'm so mad it's taking them so long to finally make another one. But Oh, well, we'll, well we're going to get to that. <laughs> don't worry. We got a little section carved out for that here. But so I was gonna. So you said you, you did a lot of racing games, a lot of Madden. So why did how did Skyrim end up? Like what 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 drew you to that? I can't tell you. <laughs> it's such a long time ago, but I I don't know if like I my parents just bought it for me one Christmas or I asked for it. But I'm glad it came into my life because it was such a fun game, and I I'm sad because it. I was doing really good my first run through, and I got stuck in a room. And I couldn't go back a save, and I couldn't get out, and that ended it for me there. I was so sad. And I finally came back to it like years later, and I played some. But that that happened to uh, me in Fallout Three. Save. I locked my I locked uh, myself in an un in a, in a glitch basically, and I found out yep. afterwards I was not the first person to be like, oh, I wonder if I can run and lock this door. Nope, Bethesda will Bethesda will just <laughs> leave you to die. You're stuck. <laughs> so what was your what was your character build? Magic, uh, barbarism, archery, I, stealth. I, I usually try to do stealth. I like sneaking up on people and taking their stuff. It's always fun. <laughs> it's always it's always stealth archer. That's what always came back to. I started to started to play that again not long ago because I wanted to. I, I want to uh, get some get some uh, locations in for target based on Skyrun's map. But I'm, I'm just, I, I'm not even kidding myself this time. I'm going right. Just stealth archer. That's all it's going to be. <laughs> just crawl around, just start oh, yeah. shooting, uh, sh- start shooting everybody in the head from there. So how much they of the map, did, all the people, Yeah. How, how much of the map do you think you got through with this one? It's a huge map. I'm pretty sure I played the whole map. It all was, the phrases, it, all the dragons. It was, it was massive. I never finished the game completely. No one ever has. Whoever tells you they did lies to you. Was, no one's finished this game. <laughs> if I never got stuck in that room, I probably would have, but never got to finish it, and it just ruined it for me, getting stuck in that room. I was so sad. It's too It's too painful. <laughs> yeah, I, I, too I'm painful. pretty sure Alduin has... I think that's the that's the main dragon uh, wyvern. Mm-hmm. If you want to get the people really angry, start comparing dragons and wyverns, and we get a whole other D&D discussion going, but we're not doing that today, but... <laughs> I, I have no doubt he has not survived. He has survived in everyone's gameplay <laughs> throughout the last decade. <laughs> he is still running around uh, 12 years later or whatever it is at this point. All right. Second game honorable mentions is a banished. So you have, you've got, obviously the list has a couple of the resource management games. Oh, uh, why are we adding this one in the honorable mentions section? So I think the reason I put that in honorable mentions is because banished was the first like city builder or anything in that genre that really got me hooked. And I I think eventually I somehow found city skylines after I was playing that. And because they stopped uh, updating banished years ago, it's just sitting on steam untouched, but that, that game really got it started for building cities and it deserves a spot in the honorable mentions for bringing me here. Ray, I'm going to interrupt because I, I need him to go back and find like one of the original Sim City builds, and I need him to go back to the ancient times of the early '90s and just see what that was like. I had, <laughs> I, I had the, I had the, the Sim City disc. I had a, oh, it was dude. a couple. I, I had Sim City, and there was a couple 2000, of CDs that came out. 2000 was an epic one. That was. Uh, yeah, there's a couple of CDs that came together because I had it's like a, I had like a racing game. Well, you, too. Could, little... you, you could also like if you had Sim City 2000, you could build your city, then use SimCopter to. Like fly a helicopter through your yes, city. Yes, it, it, there's a few of them like all collected there. I, I need you to go back to the the dark times of the '90s and just just live that for a day. Really That's get a taste. Awesome. <laughs> so if this is the game that kind of pulled you into the genre, what what's it about? What's it about the whole city building thing that you keep going back to it and trying out different versions of it? I'm probably gonna stick with. I, I've looked at rec- or some other like city builder games, but I don't think anyone can really top. City Skylines at the moment, but it, it, it's just it, the the creativity of my childhood coming back. And I just, it's so much, I can't really find that in much other games that you play with like friends and stuff like, like Fortnite or other shooter games. Like you, you can't have, you can't let that creativity flow out your brain. And these games kind of let, let me do that 
again and make me feel like a kid again in a sense. But I'm smart now and I have to problem solve all these issues in the city. <laughs> you keep saying these games when you were a kid. I had a I had a job in kids by the time you were playing these games. This this, this one hurts for some reason. This one's stinging, man. Uh, what was going on? Damn, what was going on in 2014? That was I. So I had already moved cities. I I relocated. I had uh, the kid number two on the way. Yeah, it was it was over, man. <laughs> I was in. I was I was like second half of college. Well, it would have been end of college, but I I like did two different colleges. So that was my second half of of college, 2014. <laughs> I was yeah, working 20, on that. 24, almost 25. <laughs> All right, so one more game on honorable mentions here: American Truck Simulator. And I kind of feel like I'm gonna. I understand why this is on the list here, but you wrote on your review, this is a 1,000 out of 1,000 game for you. The, the reason that it's one of those games you can mindlessly play. And like, because playing like League and like competitive games, sometimes you just need to relax and not have to worry about, oh, I need to do this. No, you just, I, I, have, I got a steering wheel now, but you just plop the steering wheel up and you just drive. And you don't have to worry about crashing because if you crash, you you're fine. It's a game. <laughs> you can just keep going, and it it's just so relaxing. I I just shut off my brain and have a good time. And and if you have a little drink here and there, it makes it even more fun. <laughs> the one time where that I, practice is acceptable. <laughs> Simulation. <right>. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Wait, if there's got to be a legal disclaimer in here or something. Uh, insert it here. But. Not real <laughs> trucks. Not real trucks. So you have the wheel. You see, you got the wheel. Do you have pedals too, or are you like yes. the, the you do? Yes. And so, what's the uh, what's kind of like what's the farthest drive you've done? Uh, I drove from southeast Texas all the way to uh, northwest Washington. It was I just like did a huge drive. It was like over two thousand miles, and like it takes hours in real life to do that. <laughs> it's not like oh we're gonna be there no it's you're in it for a while you gotta make pit stops and it's it, it's a long road <laughs> and it's is gonna that, just get bigger is that one you would like do you just sat there and did it or is you know you would pause it come back and do it in another section of it you got in the thing with this game if you pause it mid midway like let's say a stop at thousand miles and somehow the game updates it will boot you off that uh that route you're doing and so you got to play all the way through and so if i want to make this haul i got to play it all the way through or i risk losing it all just because i wanted to go take a nap <laughs> in a sense uh so you also wrote that this you have uh, your favorite gaming memory of 2022 was american truck simulator do you uh Wait. You wrote for uh, uh, your favorite memory. Twenty twenty two was it was just just playing this game in general, or was like something think, specific in it? I think when I did my uh, Christmas stream, or yeah, I, I played for twenty four hours. I, I I didn't play America Truck Simulator, but I did play it for the majority of that time, and it was just such a fun time interacting with people, and because like I don't have to focus, so like it, it is a fun game to stream if you have people in there and you could just bull crap about things and have a good time i was gonna ask if like dot simulator comes in if you start doing like a 10 hour run and, <laughs> and they come in like <laughs> pull you over looking for your logs <laughs> that would be that'd be the next step too i've seen so many simulators people playing as police officers and you know pulling people over and all that stuff we're, we're, we're on our way <laughs> and with that now we look towards the future to see the upcoming games of what you're looking forward to and on your list here, no surprise, Cities, Skylines 2. So obviously you talked about Skylines in your top three. What are you looking for in the sequel? What are you hoping to see? I, I mean, I'm on top of everything they've been posting. They've been posting like a, a little video every week. And they finally stopped and now they're letting YouTubers play it. But I'm looking forward to the AI in this game. Because from Cities 1, they take the quickest route to their destination and it can really be annoying when you're making your intersections because one intersection is going to get completely jammed because they're all going the same route and, but in cities too they made the ai make their own decisions so if they see traffic's on their route where they're going they're like oh we'll find another route 
And that's going to change the game so much in not having to worry about every every little intersection getting bottlenecked. I mean, I'm sure it's still going to still going to get there it's the name of the game so but it's going to be so much better and there's a lot more to this game that's going to change it forever and definitely going to make it the best city builder out there <laughs> i'm so excited <laughs> october 24th all right you have a you have a second we, we don't always let a second game slide through but you know we're gonna we kind of we kind of referenced earlier when we talked about skyrim many many moons later I think they, they said, uh, what, 2026 at best. We're going to see the Elder Scrolls Six, which we're going to have a, a brief moment of silence here for those of us who don't typically game on the PC, who don't play on the Xbox, because this is going to be an Xbox PC exclusive. So there will not be, much like we saw with Starfield, there will not be a PlayStation option for uh, for this particular game to be played. So rest in, rest in <laughs> peace, moment of silence for... Uh, for everyone looking forward to that, but you know, what do you what do you want to see here? So we're gonna have a, a new Elder Scrolls game. They're also, I think, we're gonna see Elder Scrolls Four again before we actually get there. So maybe you just have to get ready for Oblivion to uh, come out here and get a remaster. <laughs> but um, I, I think you're doing Fallout. They're doing Fallout Three and Oblivion before they're gonna do Six. But what do you want to see here? I, I just remember in 2018, I think it was uh, GamesCon or something. They like teased Elder Scrolls Six and. Now, what is it like six years ago, five years ago? <laughs> yeah, too long. Yeah, yeah, too long. I I just want to see that that little clip I saw of I, I think they were like flying through the mountains and the trees. And I was like, oh, that looks so beautiful. It's going to be so much fun uh, for another three years. I, it won't <laughs> someday that and that's Maybe. best case scenario. Three years. Yeah. Yeah. Best case. <laughs> Any features you want to see or you just want to get back into the world? I just want to get back to the world and hopefully because like I've seen a little bit of Starfield gameplay. I haven't played it myself, but they don't look like they really upgraded the uh, people like the they'll say the it still same looks like a Bethesda game. Yeah. Yeah. Like I'm hoping they make it a little bit better. Like you've been p- spending years and planning years on this game, but Hopefully, I'm just hoping it's not a disappointment. Like I, I gotta some games say, like Elder Cyberpunk Scrolls is their it's their it's their goat like it's their uh, their shining seer like Fallout. They picked up part of the way through Starfield. They're kind of like crazy. Like I feel like Elder Scrolls they that they view that as their like crown jewel. They're not going to mess that one up. They refuse to to mess that up. But, but they need didn't some Microsoft, they need some they need some new action. Yeah. Didn't Microsoft buy? Oh yes, yes they did. That's why. Yeah. That's why it's oh. exclusive. We're not gonna. That's why we're not gonna see it elsewhere. Yeah. So hopefully they do what they did with Minecraft and just kept making it better. So hopefully Elder Scrolls Six would be the best game of its time whenever it comes out. <laughs> twenty 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 six or twenty twenty seven. Yes, many many moves <laughs> from now. All right. Well, let's move on to a quest. A question from the Channel Three History Books. We have picked for you to discuss with us here tonight. We don't warn you about this one, but we usually pull out one you've answered in the past. The The question that we are going to pick for you here is what is the single most difficult move, skill, something along those lines to execute in gaming? Probably in at least in because uh, I, I don't really play much like fighter games, but uh, League trying to get a combo out that in your head, you're like, oh, this could be great. Oh, that didn't work. Trying to get combos in. And getting your abilities at the right timing, especially with Trandomir, like my best champion, his ult is he's invulnerable for five seconds. So I can't die for five seconds as long as I press that button. That's probably like the hardest thing <laughs> I've ever had to do. But Sequencing. It's, it's like the easiest, easiest ability in the game of League. But if you miss it by a split second, you're dead. <laughs> and the last question we ask every guest is what has been your favorite feature on channel three so far i am so excited there is notifications now <laughs> like probably so far like it's because like i mean opening it and seeing notifications was a cool thing like oh that's neat but like now I'll get to now being able to see it on my home screen or on my lock screen like oh that's it's so that's such a cool feature now that we finally have that but like just the community and the the different 
groups of people that like all these different games and like how everyone can have any conversation about a game and everyone's positive and having a good time. The best platform I've ever used. Like I, I care less about anything else. Channel three. I'm so, I'm so glad I found it. So it, it such a great community and a great platform. Thank you, Joel. <laughs> Thank you, Joel. And with that, we've made it to the end of another What Are You 3 podcast. Thank you, Dorsal, for being here today. You can find the podcast at c3.gg slash podcast, dropping every Wednesday morning at 3.33 a.m. Eastern on all the major platforms, including Spotify, Google Podcasts, and Apple Podcasts. I am Ray. Dan Tucker puts this all together. And for the executive producer, Joel Willis, have a good day, everybody. <laughs>